Yesterday, NBC News White House correspondent Jeff Bennett questioned the Biden administration's advocacy for Neera Tannen to lead OMB as compared to their rather feeble efforts to pass a $15 minimum wage. Let's take a look at what happened. The White House doesn't have 50 votes to confirm Neera Tandon as OMB director, and yet uh, we heard from the White House Chief of Staff say that the White House is they're going to fight their guts out, fight our guts out was the phrase he used, to get her confirmed. So why push for that and not push as hard, one could say, for raising the minimum wage? You could make the argument that the American people stand to benefit more from a higher wage than they would from a chosen OMB director. Well, I think that's mixing a few things um, kind of irresponsibly, if I'm just being totally honest. Um, I would say on the minimum wage, the president included a raise of the minimum wage in his package because he felt strongly that it's long overdue, that men and women working hard, trying to make ends meet, shouldn't be living at the poverty level. That's why he put it in his package. Hmm. So D.C. Bureau Chief at The Intercept, Ryan Grimmie, joins us now to discuss. Ryan, I don't know what other, what's irresponsible at all about that question. It actually seems quite reasonable to me. What's your take on all this? That's a totally fair question. I actually, though, disagree uh, with, a, with a lot of people on, on this. And, and hmm. I think that it's because you have to, I think, separate the theater from what is actually being done behind the scenes. And I think the answer to the, to the question is that the White House isn't actually fighting for either of these things. Now, when, when, it, when, it, when it comes to Neera Tandon, and when it comes to all nominees, until the moment that the nominee drops out of contention or is, or, you know, is, is pulled by the administration, they will publicly say that they are fighting tooth and nail to get them confirmed. Now, the, the, the question, though, is what are they actually doing behind the scenes? And if they're fighting, you're going to see some evidence of it. And from talking to people in and around the Biden transition, the Biden administration, they're not actually doing anything significant behind the scenes. They're they're not they're not they're not pushing senators to, you know, uh, to get behind her. They're not trying to figure out what kind of deals can be offered. And in fact, some of the things they have done publicly have undermined her in a bit just, just by saying that, look, if she doesn't get confirmed, will find a place for her in the administration lowers the stakes and the urgency of confirming her. So, well, hello, Virginia. <laughs> uh, so, so they're not really doing anything and they're not, and they're also not really doing anything to fight for fit, get to get the $15 minimum wage uh, into this package. So I think the answer that the honest answer would have been, well, we're not fighting for either, but until Nira withdraws, uh, they're not going to say that yeah. publicly. Right. Yeah. And I mean, Ryan, I, look, I have my own answers to this, but I'm always mm. interested in your perspective. Why aren't they fighting for a $15 minimum wage? There's some reporting out this morning that they haven't even tried with Joe Manchin to pressure him or horse trade. They really haven't put any pressure on, of course. And when the Senate parliamentarian said we can't do it, they just immediately cave. Why? I mean, my, my read is that this this wasn't a high priority of Biden's in the in the covid relief package to begin with he's he's kind of an extreme senate traditionalist uh even though the bird rule is not part of senate tradition it's the bird rule bird was recently alive this is a re yeah. this is a relatively new thing and so i think that he kind of accepted that he was going to lose on this and was never planning to fight for it much uh to begin with from the beginning and so once it looked like it wasn't going to happen then uh, he's like, OK, well, this isn't this isn't going to happen. Uh, you know, you do have a lot of people that are actually fighting for the for the fifteen dollar wage mm -hmm. in in Congress and some, you know, inside the administration, which is actually another difference uh, between that fight and Nira, because can you think of anybody in Congress who's organizing letters in support, mm -hmm. who's who's talking publicly saying, no, we need to make this happen? You've seen some people make you know, uh, some identity related claims, but that's that's just kind of ginning up the old culture war and using, you know, whatever's in the news to make your culture war arguments. But there actually isn't any kind of uh, faction that's organized fighting for Nero where you do have a faction that's fighting for the $15 wage. Well, yeah. And, and I, Brian, I, I also yeah, think that Biden thinks he can get this later to, to, to for a more specific answer to your question. I think he doesn't think that this is over, whereas when it comes to Nira, 
you're not going to get near again in the future for OMB director. Mm. And I think Biden is actually quite fine with that. Well, let's interrogate that. Is he wrong? Because, I mean, another reconciliation, yes, absolutely could happen. We know that it takes a lot of heartache. What, you need to have two fiscal years within a single year. It's not as easy necessarily the second time around as the first. Mansion's demands and cinema's demands are going to remain the same. So is he wrong about that bet? It seems very risky from my perspective. Well, what people have to remember is that the, the wage scale that they're fighting for is really paltry. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, everybody was complaining about how awful this was. The mm -hmm. fact that, you know, the $15 doesn't go up until 2024. So is it possible that you can get, you know, some type of staggered increase that is equal to what was originally pushed for in, in the COVID relief package? Yes, sure. Because what that does is it says we're going to raise it to $11 in the next couple in the next year or two. And then we're going to, you know, gradually raise it up up to fifteen dollars. So I, I certainly think that there are that they can they can somehow find the votes and maybe through, uh, you know, so maybe, maybe through a standalone package to say, well, we're going to move it to eleven dollars by you know the end of next year. And then and then they have and then they'd have to come back and push it higher. Uh, but the, the 2024 was, you know, that's, you know, three, four years off off in the future. So they still have time uh, to get to get to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just hard for me to see why they would fight in the future when they're unwilling to yeah. fight now. Um, Ryan, always great to have your perspective on these things. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Yeah, you got it. Absolutely. Coming up, Congressman Ro Khanna is going to discuss those airstrikes in Syria and the minimum wage that's been rising continues.